Satte te jagat karanaya There is only one God, though his names be many. Maheshwar, the supreme being, symbolizes the creator, the destroyer, and the preserver. But for those who cannot conceive the Almighty in his manifold form, his various aspects are each personified by a different deity. Brahma, the creator, Shiv, the terrible destroyer of the forces of evil, represented by the demon Andak, whom he pierces with his trident. Vishnu, who rests on the timeless serpent Shesh, preserveth the world. Yada, yada, hi dharmasya, lanida bhavati bharata, abhyutthanam, in the holy book of the Hindus, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, who is an incarnation of Vishnu, says, Whenever the law fails and lawlessness riseth up, then do I bring myself to bodied birth, to guard the righteous, to destroy evildoers, to establish the law, I come into birth age after age. To fulfill his pledge to mankind, Vishnu was born in many different incarnations known as avatars. As Vara, the mighty boar, Vishnu slew a demon named Hiranyaksha, who had dragged the earth under the ocean. In the sculpture, Vara is seen lifting up the earth symbolized by the goddess Prithvi. As Varman the dwarf, he assumes mighty proportions and covers the earth and heaven in two strides, and then, with the third placed on the head of the proud King Bali, he sends him forever to the nether regions. Vishnu's last and ninth incarnation was as Buddha. This avatar brings us to the period of recorded history. To perpetuate the memory of the Master, the followers of the faith built rock-cut shrines of which the group Atajanta is the most notable. With the revival of Brahmanism in the 6th century AD, Many cave temples that rival the rock-cut monasteries of the Buddhists were constructed by followers of the Hindu faith. This is the Vaishnav cave at Badami in Bijapur district, built in the 6th century AD. It is the earliest rock-cut shrine dedicated to the god Vishnu. It is famed for the bracket figures which flank the capitals of its richly ornamented pillars. These amorous couples are the embodiment of beauty and grace and signify the dual aspect of creative energy. The sculpture of the Badami Caves breeds a spirit of a fresh and vigorous art where every pillar medallion is transformed into a sculptural masterpiece. Even the elaborate ceilings have sculptured medallions, while friezes of fat dwarfs yield a comic relief to the somber setting. In cave number one at Badami, there is also a 16-armed dancing shiv, which is an unusual form of the god. And now we go to another famed rock temple on the island of Elephanta near Bombay. Today it is a popular haunt both of devotees of art and of pleasure seekers. But in the days of its pristine glory, it was known as Puri, the jewel of the seven seas. Here dwells Shiv as the great Maheshwar, wrongly called the Trimurti. It is not known which dynasty of kings constructed this shrine, but it certainly belongs to the 7th century AD and not later. Its sculpture is the high watermark of post-Gupta art. This is the marriage of Shiv with Parvati, the daughter of Himale, who underwent an austere penance to win the god's love. And here stands Shiv erect to bear the weight of the river Ganga on his head as she descends to earth. This is Shiv as Ardnarishva, one of his many forms in which he combines in one figure the concept of both god and goddess. At Alora in Hyderabad state is a series of cave temples of the Buddhist, Brahmanical and Jain faiths. 
The earliest of the Brahmanical caves, and almost contemporary with Elephanta, is the Dashavata excavation, notable for the high quality of its carving and its fine sculpture. And this is the cosmic dance of Shiv, symbolizing the eternal process of evolution, which is the endless cycle of destruction and creation. And this is Shiv protecting his devotee Markandeya, whom the god of death sought to drag down into Hades. The Rameshwar cave at Alora of the 7th or early 8th century AD invites comparison with the Vaishnav cave at Padami because of its beautiful bracket figures, though the pillars are of a different order. Majestic doorkeepers known as Dwarpals guard the shrine. Here also is seen a dancing shiv. Note the thick corded sacred thread and the heavy crescent necklace worn by the god. His consort Parvati watches the dance in admiration. And these are the Saptmatris, who are seven goddesses regarded as the divine mothers of creation. The intricate headdresses of these beautiful goddesses are characteristic of the art of this period. This panel depicts Ravan, the demon king of Lanka, trying to lift Mount Kailash, on which Shiv is seated with his consort. But the great god pressed the mountain with his foot and imprisoned Ravan under it for a thousand years. We proceed to the Sita Kinahani cave, or Sita's bath cave, as it is popularly known. Its plan and its pillars, with ribbed cushion capitals and the guardian dwarpals, all remind us of Elephanta. But this cave is a later excavation. Note again the elaborate coiffeur with curls. The lion guarding its entrance is a picturesque sentinel against the noonday sun. Here also we see the marriage of Shiv and Parvati, which was a popular theme with the sculptors of old. Note the coy expression on Parvati's face as the stately Shiv holds her hand. The gods bless the happy occasion. In the Ravan Kikai cave is another dancing Shiv. Here the god is seen in his furious aspect as his mighty arms whirl through the air. This is Mount Kailash in the snow-clad Himalayan ranges. It is supposed to be the abode of the gods like Mount Olympus of Greek mythology. Inspired by this holy mountain, the sculptors of Ellora built this most famous monolithic temple in India to resemble the outline and shape of Mount Kailash and called it Kailash Nath. It was constructed in the latter half of the 8th century AD by Krishna II, the powerful Rashtrakut king of the Deccan. This wonder in stone is hewed out of an entire hillside. The temple is supported on a base of warring lions and elephants. Scenes from the great Indian epic Mahabharata are also carved on the walls. And around the main shrine are sculptured balconies and pillared porticos. In the shrine itself is the Shivaling, the emblem of Shiv. All the well-known themes are seen again. Shiv protecting Markandeya, Vishnu's three strides, whence he is known as Trivikram. And in this shrine are the graceful forms of the river goddesses, Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati, who symbolize the three holy rivers. These magnificent pillars of the vase and foliage design are in the gallery popularly known as Lankeshwar. The dance of Shiv was indeed an oft-repeated theme, the dance without beginning and without end. In these miracles of stone did the kings of old express their devotion to their many gods. And it was Vishnu who said, Brahma and Shiv and I are one. Who worshipeth me, worshipeth us all. Thank you.